Hello and welcome guys. So, as I promised, um, today we're going to do an update video um, over the Nook. So, let's talk what upgrades I got from last time. So, first thing, which is pretty obvious, I can't really use my gaming mouse and keyboard. I need something else and with this compact size, I wanted something that was compact and something that was easy to use and easy to move around because it's not usually what I use on my desktop. So I got a low profile keyboard and mouse combo, which again, they're really tiny. Um, the quality is quite all right and I bought them off Amazon for like 25 bucks. So pretty good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I have quite enjoyed them. They're, they're getting the job done. They are, they are wireless and low profile, which is everything that I needed. So yeah, I got those. Now let's get inside and see what I upgraded there. So if we take a look at the inside, first of all, the thing you can definitely see is the new hard drive. So I got a two tera hard drive, 2.5 inch. It's really small, um, but it does fit in really nicely. Um, this is my SSD as you can see. Um, but yeah, um, two teras means that I can basically put everything that I want, every game, every movie or TV show that I can download, which is pretty dope. And I got another stick of memory as you can see. Um, it is Samsung, it is from the same line. Unfortunately, it's not the exact same, but it is enough to the point where I feel like the latency is the same, so there shouldn't be like performance issue from having RAM sticks that are not the same because I mean, it's not the biggest problem to have RAM sticks that are not completely compatible with each other. But I definitely think that there is a performance benefit for that. So yeah, I got that. Now let's look at the performance then. Okay, so um, as you guys can see, I have connected the Nook to my capture card, so um, don't expect any performance issues with how the Nook performs just because I am recording simultaneously. This is done for my different PC, so everything should be fine. No performance hit should happen. Um, the background, do you like it? <laughs> I, I've put way too much effort into making this background work, um, but I won't get into that. So as you can see, we have 8 gigs of RAM, a dual channel at 2400, nice. Again, the graphics now have much more like shared GPU memory that it can use, so that's good. And again, CPU, I have used it in my testing, I've seen it go to the advertised 3.8 gigahertz, um, which is good, and I have seen the GPU does fine, I guess. Um, let's look at what we're going to test out. So we're going to test out Minecraft, Enter the Gungeon, and some emulators. I don't have any Citrus game, and I have not tested it, so not yet. And we'll do some Rocket League, and unfortunately, uh, while I do have Genshin Impact, unfortunately, apparently, there is something where um, the Intel GPU can run the game, but you need to do a lot of walkarounds and you need to deactivate Windows Defender and whatnot. So, unfortunately, even though I really wanted to test how this game will perform on the Nook, considering the fact that it is basically Breath of the Wild and it can run on mobile, I really wanted to test it out. Unfortunately, the game just crashes after a few seconds. And if it happens with a built in graphics of Intel, so that sucks. But yeah, let's go on to the performance. Okay, and in terms of, a po of uh, performance, here we are in Minecraft. As you can see, um, I am using VSync, so we are capped at 60 FPS, but that is fine because VSync, like, especially when you're low end gaming. I feel like if you do have just a 60 hertz monitor and you don't have anything else that you want to push FPS, just cranking out the details till you use like 80-90% of the GPU so you're not completely destroying your PC by like completely um, pushing your GPU for no reason. Um, I feel like this is actually pretty fine. So we are having a smooth 60 FPS, no real drops. 
Um, in terms of quality, we have a chunks render of uh, 12. We have graphics uh, set in fancy and everything else is smooth lighting and good brightness and whatnot. And as you can see, the performance is really good. Uh, again, we are capped at 60 FPS. Everything is looking really fine, really smooth. You can see my little house that I built. And yeah, like I had the problem, like when I initially booted Minecraft off of this PC, I had a problem which every like second I would drop so many frames. And as you can see, I am using currently like 5.5 gigs of RAM. So um, when previously, when I initially built the PC, I only had four. So that would mean that everything would buffer like a fucking maniac because I didn't, I just didn't have enough RAM in the system. So upgrading it to 10 to 8 gigs and not having dual channel really improves the stability and the way games move. And I really like it. This is definitely a good Minecraft experience. Everything looks really nice and sweet and the chunks like you can't see that much ahead like with my PC like my main one I can go for up to like 24 chunks and be just fine. Um, but yeah everything just looks fine and moves really smoothly so yeah let's move on to the next game. Okay, so here we are in Enter the Gungeon. Please don't play me because I'm bad at the game. Um, but yeah, just as we have seen with uh, Minecraft, a lot of like these indie titles, these uh, lower requirement PCs, just it performs really nice on this system. Don't expect to run any triple game, but a lot of like the the latest indie game or like just good indie games that you can play whenever just performs really fine and this is exactly what I I wanted out of this PC um, just something that can run all of these uh, more basic games but yet something that gives you enough of a gaming experience so that you don't feel like you have missed anything by using the much much smaller phone factor, let alone the fact that eventually you can use an eGPU to increase the setup. Um, but yeah, as you can see we're moving around, we are again capped at 60 FPS, but everything is smooth, details look fine, I don't expect Enter the Gungeon really, ah, uh, why am I so bad, to perform any bad like no reason for it to perform bad really. Um, and it's really good to know that it does perform really nice. Um, uh, how did I miss everything? I have no idea what this is. This is enemy is. But yeah, performance. Oh my god, performance is just nice and just plain me being bad at games. But yeah, 60 FPS. The GPU usage is up at 80. CPU is getting a bit hot, but that's fine. It is relatively quiet. No extra HP, really. Do I have enough for armor? I don't. Well, um, yeah. So that's it. Let's uh, get on to the next game then. Okay. So uh, here we are at Rocket League. We are going around 30, um, 40 FPS, which. Um, you would think is not that good considering it is Rocket League and it is a pretty easy to run game but we are on 1080p high and I found out that for some reason no matter how low I put my uh, either render resolution or just quality um, it all just seems to not really affect the FPS in a way that matters so I just kept everything on high Overall, it does provide a pretty smooth experience with the 40 FPS. Um, it's not terrible, actually, um, but it's not as smooth as like, let's say 60 or whatever. But it does look better because like when I tested this out with like lower quality, every time just, yeah, it would like, for some reason, no it would look like garbage and the FPS gain wasn't there so 
Yeah, as you can see, just like Minecraft, um, I tried to test the game previously, but the lack of RAM really hindered the performance. I am currently using 6 of my 8 gigs, so yeah, not having that RAM really did, um, did a number on uh, the performance, so that's really good that um, everything just works fine now. As you can see, the GPU is not in complete 100% usage, but that is completely fine. And we are getting a pretty smooth experience, not as smooth as you would want necessarily, but smooth enough to the point where it's definitely playable and it's definitely look good. So yeah, let's go on to the next game. Okay, so here we are with the, using the Dolphin Emulator. We are running The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. And as you can see, um, we are running at 1080p. And performance is pretty smooth. It is only 30 FPS, but as you can see, the GPU it will, would like to push it to 60, but I don't think we can. I'm not sure whether that just, if the game just locked on 30 or whether it's something to do with the emulator, I'm not sure. But yeah, it does run pretty smoothly. We are using about 50% of the GPU and the CPU is relatively unused, but it's running pretty like uh, decently temp, I should say. And performance is just fine, like no really um, drops in frames, just everything just kind of works and kind of fine. Um, yeah, so as we look around, we move the camera, no real drops, and overall a pretty good smooth experience from the emulator, which is uh, really nice. Yeah, okay, um, here we are again using Dolphin Emulator. We are playing Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, pretty cool game. Um, we have there was a hitch uh, in drop there, but we are running at 1080p. Um, yeah, and just like previously, the the experience is pretty smooth. There, there are some hitches. I'm not sure whether it's to do with the actual game it, itself and the file. Yeah, it seems like the emulator kind of wants to just smooth around to 1080 while the game wants to remain with the same quality, which is kind of annoying, but it's not terrible considering the fact that everything kind of just remains pretty smooth overall in the performance department and really like there is not really that much usage in terms of both CPU and GPU, so yeah, everything is just fine. Again, emulation with the Dolphin, it's really optimized, just works great. You can even run it with only 4 gigs, as you can see. And yeah, let's move on to a different emulator then. Okay, so here we are using some uh, Desumi to emulate DS. And now, this thing is... Uh, it, it's really bad, actually. <laughs> Um, performance is not that amazing because it really like heavily uses CPU instead of GPU for all of its render so uh, unfortunately it looks like my uh, my uh, what you call it the display for showing all of the, the stats and whatnot is not compatible with this so um, we will have Task Manager running in the background instead. But as you can see, we are using 50% CPU and only 10% GPU. So it's really not optimized, but luckily for us, we still have a full on quad core in this machine. So, performance, unfortunately. But performance still is uh, just fine enough to the point where everything feels smooth. Um, yeah, like, there we are, no flame drops, unfortunately, I, like, I, I'm bad, I, I have no idea whether I'm running at 30 or 60 FPS as far as the experience is smooth, and there are no, uh, um, problems that I can actually see on my screen, but yeah, um, everything looks fine, um, everything is responsive and working probably as it should, me being bad at the game does not mean that 
the emulation of both the performance of the, the, the PC is bad. So yeah, let's try another game with this simulator. Okay, so uh, here we are with some uh, Pokemon in black. Um, yeah, like, not really much to say. CPU is there uh, on 50%, performance is just fine. Like, there are no crazy drops playing. The RAM is really, really low, only on 3 gigs. And again, almost no GPU usage, which just shows how unoptimized this simulator is, but at the same time, the fact that you still can, um, the, this uh, now can still run it relatively pretty good, um, I think it's pretty cool. And yeah, let's just finish this battle. So, um, yeah, as we said, um, performance is just fine. And with that, this is like all the games that I really wanted to show off how they perform on the PC. So, as you can see, definitely a, a really decent performance in a really small package. And just a lot of like upgradability. Like, I can get, like, currently, like, this league is pretty like pimped up. I have 8 gigs in dual channel. I have 2 terabytes of, S of a hard drive. I have 40 gigs of SSD, which again, all things that I don't think I'll get to fully use. But at the same time, I do have a credibility class. I can use um, a 2 terabyte SSD instead of 2 terabyte hard drive. I can use. Uh, maybe like four or five um, terabytes hard drive those exist. I can use an NVMe, a better NVMe SSD to replace my current one. I can go up to 32 gigs of RAM. There are just a lot of options and a lot of cool things you can do with this machine. And if you've ever, if you have seen how it performs in game, so performer in browser is just fine, just as smooth as you would expect. Um, every kind of um, workload such as, such as Word, Excel, all of those kind of stuff works just fine. And yeah, with that, this uh, performance part of the video is over. So um, if you want to leave, you can use now. Everything right now is a bit extra, which uh, I'm going to go over later. Okay, so now we are in the extra part of this video. So I'm going to talk about this uh, this desktop wallpaper. So this is a fan art of uh, Shinobu or his shot art, whatever, from the Monogatari series. But it 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 gave me way too much trouble. So first of all, there is the wallpaper itself, right? As you can see, you can barely see it, but there is black borders both on the top and the bottom. So what I did is I just deleted the top and I left only the bottom. The problem is the the moment I did that, as you can see, if you close re if you look really closely, you can still see the black borders. But there was this part that was extremely obvious over how it like um showed its uh its uh its borders right so i wanted to delete that so i took this specific part and i used a photo editing program which i used for also my thumbnails and i was able to paint this part and also this part around here like just with really like small colors and enough just to make the wallpaper look much much smoother than it was because before that it was like cut here and you could just see like a black border here so i didn't really like that and it was really disturbing my eyes so i was able to do that in the in the editing program i'll launch that and i'll show you how it looks there okay yeah so now we look at the image as you can see like this part um you can just have the border and it was barely on top of uh, of the taskbar so you could definitely see that so I was able to like barely like just copying the, the other colors barely to 
kind of paint around and have like a enough of a brush to like make everything kind of resemble I you as you can see I did it here but this color so definitely more hard to see and over here as well. But yeah, I feel like that just completed the wallpaper and made everything just looks much more smoother and better for the eyes. And yeah, with that, I do hope you enjoy my uh, thoughts and performance review of the NUC. I really love this machine. It offers uh, a lot of power and a lot of upgradability pass. Again, replacing all the important components, having the option to go with an eGPU setup also is really cool. Um, all of the ports and everything just a lot of uh, speed and performance from a really really small form factor and I really love it. So yeah, I do hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!